Meditation 11. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Again, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The Transfigured Saint of God, a production of the grace of God. Paul, in his letter to the Galatians, gives a very powerful description of the essence of the grace of God. He writes, My little children, of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. Paul is giving a vital clue to what it means to be Christian and to help solve the dilemma of struggling believers. Most Christians need simply to return to the basics, the very foundation of what it means to be Christian to cure the majority of their problems. The prayer of Paul for the Galatian saints was that Christ would be formed in them. The verb be formed means to form are the form by which a person or thing strikes, that is, resembles the vision, the external experience. A more literal translation of that verse is, until the mind and life in complete harmony with Christ shall have been formed in you. Paul is defining a Christian as one who has Christ formed or is in the process of having Christ formed in his life. The real question is, how is Christ formed in the life of the Christian? The phrase, be formed in Christ be formed in you, is a verb in the passive voice. The subject of the sentence is Christ. In the passive voice, the subject is acted upon. Thus the subject Christ is being acted upon by some outside agent which produces in the outward expression of the believer the right external appearance. In other words, what is the process by which the individual who has Christ on the inside becomes a saint so that the world can see Christ on the outside. Many Christians believe and preach that Christ's likeness is formed by imitation. They study the Bible to find out what a Christian must do and then attempt to do those imperative commands by living for Christ. They understand that to be Christ-like is simply to imitate Christ. What would Jesus do? They want the world to see Christ in their lives, but it is a misguided attempt to live the Christian life in their own ability. Unfortunately, but in reality, thank God, self-righteousness always comes up short. The Gospel of Jesus Christ reveals the amazing truth of Christ being formed in the life of the believer. Paul, in his letter to the Romans, proclaims, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. The key word in this statement is transformed. The Christian is not to be like the world, but he is to be transformed. 
hidden in this word is the real essence of what it means to have Christ formed in the believer. In the Mount of Transfiguration experience of Jesus, the same word is used. The Greek word is translated transformed in Paul's statement and transfigured in Matthew's account. Jesus was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. In other words, before this event, Peter, James, and John saw Jesus as any other human being. However, when Jesus was transfigured, they saw him to the limit that man can see God as he really was, the Son of God. The essence of what Jesus was on the inside shone out to the outside. He was transfigured. In Paul's statement to the Romans, he is saying that all believers should become transfigured saints. They should not be like the world. But let that which they really are on the inside shine out to be formed on the outside. They have Christ within them, and Christ should be seen in their lives. The world should see them as they really are Christian. Obviously, Paul's statements of Christ be formed in you and be ye transformed are synonymous. However, they still do not reveal the process of that transformation. The means of this transformation is revealed in the only other place where the Greek word, which is translated transformed in Romans 12 and transfigured in Matthew 17, is found in the New Testament. Paul says to the Corinthians, but we all are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. The word changed is the same word translated, transformed, and transfigured. Here, however, Paul gives added insight to the process of becoming a transfigured saint, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. In Paul's statement to the Galatians, Christ be formed in you, the verb is a passive verb. Something acts upon the subject to produce the proper outward manifestation in the believer who receives the action of having Christ formed in him. The believer is to become a transfigured saint by the production of the Holy Spirit. Christ's likeness is not by imitation of Christ, but by participation in Christ. The key to being transformed is allowing the Holy Spirit the liberty to perform the work of Christ in the believer. Christ's being formed in the believer is not by the works of the believer, but by the production of the Holy Spirit. The second point of Galatians 4.19 reveals why the transformation process does not occur in most Christians. Paul writes, My little children, of whom I travail in birth again. In this statement, Paul implies that something has happened to the Galatian saints. He is saying, I travailed once for you. However, I now have to travail again for you. The struggle that the Galatian saints were experiencing is the same struggle that will cause most Christians not to become transfigured saints.
Something had happened to the Christians in Galatia. Paul wrote to them, You did run well. Who did hinder you? He wrote, Who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth. Paul wanted to know, Who took their eyes off of Jesus? He proclaimed, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him to a perverted gospel of Christ. The Christians at the Church of Galatia had been won to Christ in Paul's first missionary journey. They readily accepted the gospel. Paul departed, and certain Christian teachers who were probably Christians converted out of Judaism came to Galatia and began to teach. Evidently, these teachers were instrumental in turning the eyes of the Galatian saints off of Jesus and on to something else. Whatever it was that the teachers from Jerusalem were teaching the Galatians, it perverted the gospel and they were not becoming transfigured saints. A clue to what exactly these teachers from Jerusalem were teaching can be found in the phrase, works of the law, as found in Galatians 2.16, a phrase Paul uses six times in the first three chapters of Galatians. Although the entire letter to the Galatians was written because of a misunderstanding of this works of the law, it is in Paul's letter to the Romans that he illustrates the truth even more clearly. He writes, Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law have dominion over a man as long as he liveth. For the woman which hath a husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loose from the law of her husband. So then if, while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from that law, so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. After building this truth, Paul then reveals why he is using this analogy of husband and wife. He states, Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that ye should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sins, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. But now we are delivered from the law, that being dead wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of the spirit, and not in the oldness of the letter. In this passage of scripture, Paul is actually revealing what he calls a perverted gospel in the letter to the Galatians. An adulterated gospel, a mixture of law and grace, cannot produce a transformed life. It will produce a lifestyle in which the statement of Paul, so that you cannot do the things that you would, Galatians 5.17, will always be true in the life of the believer. How sad to have Christ living within the believer, but to no effect, Galatians 5.4, and to have Christ actually dwelling within the Christian but profiting the Christian nothing, Galatians 5.2.
the Holy Spirit actually desires to transform the believer into a transfigured saint of God, but is most often quenched or frustrated by the believer's own desire to be righteous by the works of the law. Why is it so hard for Christians who believe that Christ died for their sins to be forgiven to believe that Christ was raised from the dead to live the Christian life for them? Being transformed into the image of Christ is the very essence of what it means to be Christian, a powerful truth of Christianity, yet misunderstood by so many. Is it any wonder why Paul says to the Galatian saints, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another gospel, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ? The power to make a transfigured saint is in the gospel itself. The grace of God through the word and the spirit can transform a sinner into the powerful presentation of a transfigured saint of God. Thought and Prayer for Today Heavenly Father, I believe that your Son died on the cross and was buried in a tomb. I also believe that you raised him from the dead and took him back into the heavenly realm. I also believe that you sent him back to his followers and to me in the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray today that your Son will live in me. My cry is, transform me, transfigure me, change me by the power of your Spirit. Perhaps she would like to pray this prayer with me. Repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I believe that your Son died on the cross and was buried in a tomb. I also believe that you raised him from the dead and took him back into the heavenly realm. I also believe that you sent him back to his followers and to me in the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray today that your Son will live in me. My cry is, transform me, transfigure me, change me by the power of your Spirit. This I pray. Amen.